Hey, I've been interested for many years in uh, people in positions of power, and in order to understand them, I sort of try to paint them. And uh, so I've been uh, periodically coming back to this subject matter for years. The, the Gulf War situation uh, uh, had a lot of coverage and uh, a lot of visual uh, material, probably more than anything else in history. and. Uh, so it seemed like a, an appropriate time to study this particular problem again, and uh, so many of the works in this show deal with uh, uh, the Gulf War, but particularly with uh, what individuals did with this particular kind of situation in order to enhance their own personal image or whatever their their image of power happened to be. And uh, this is what interested me particularly in doing uh, this sort of work. Uh, I worried about it being dated, but uh, actually I could have uh, turned the suits into togas and uh, into uh, kingly robes or whatever you want to call them, and uh, it wouldn't have made any difference. History just tends to repeat itself, and uh, we're just in the flow of time at the present time, and it's going to be here, it's not going to go away. sort of came from this. Uh, I know uh, George Bush in one of his inaugural addresses uh, kept bringing up the, the relationship of himself with George Washington and uh, I was kind of uh, struck with the idea of the myth uh, or maybe it's a reality that George Washington had wooden teeth and uh, I figured George Bush has a, a wooden head. He's kind of like a puppet that uh, somebody else pulling strings all the time and uh, so uh, uh, the uh, painting sort of resulted out of uh, uh, trying to pull together these two sort of uh, mythological ideas uh, of these two leaders of our country. This painting is a result of uh, another Polaroid shot of the uh, President Bush's speech, uh, the victory speech uh, at the Gulf War and uh, the uh, reaction of Congress uh, applauding him uh, a standing ovation about every two minutes, it seemed like. Uh, what I was struck with is how many of them looked exactly alike. They all had this uh, stupid American flag uh, glued on their chest, and uh, uh, they all they all would just, just clap their hands and strutted around saying, gee, we just had a, a wonderful time over there, and what a wonderful war that was. And uh, uh, I decided to put Powell in there, I'm not applauding. I, as I understood it, he wasn't too happy with the whole affair, so I think it's kind of ironic where you have these kind of strutty, uh, chicken-like, turkey-like uh, uh, senators uh, applauding a sort of chicken, turkey-like uh, speech by Bush uh, about how uh, how wonderful this war was, and not, not a single one of them had anything to do with it. Okay, this this painting sort of sort of grew out of the farm crisis uh, that we had. Uh, in the late 70s, where so many uh, farms were being foreclosed on, and so many uh, farmers were committing suicide, and uh, I guess that's still going on, but to, for a particular, uh, in a particular sense, at the present time, that uh, we just don't hear about it very much. Uh, I like to comment that there's uh, on the painting here that came from Will Pratt, who was uh, a farm movement historian, and uh, he said there's there's feeling out there that nobody gives a damn. Most Americans have grown so removed from their agrarian roots that they think mail comes from a carton and cornflakes come from a box. Uh, and I guess we even feel more so that way now. The, uh, I happen to be uh, kind of interested in working on Whirligig kind of things at the present time, and so that, that kind of creeped into the painting. And uh, you have these uh, arms swirling around like a windmill, uh, uh, sort of mechanically uh, beating people into the ground. <clears throat> this painting is uh, called CEO, all dressed up and no place to go, and sort of comes out of what uh, is, is sort of obscene salaries that uh, CEOs uh, are paid uh, many millions of dollars, and then when they uh, get fired from the job, they give them many millions more just to leave, and I, I always found that kind of 
kind of obscene and sort of ridiculous. So nobody ever give me big money just to leave a job. But, uh, they seem to uh, have the characteristic of just going into anything. It's almost like they could go down to the uh, uh, local uh, garbage can store and, and immediately take over and uh, know exactly what was going on there. Okay, the thing started out as a little watercolor study that uh, came out looking pretty cubist. I thought it was a pretty good idea, so I went ahead and uh, kind of approached this uh, this man is a kind of a, a cubist sort of thing, and it's showing a lot of different views of the same guy. And uh, uh, so we kind of, kind of uh, went out from there. One of my friends gave me a little uh, box full of pins he'd been saving, and there was a, a Kawasaki pin in there. And uh, I looked at it for a while, finally on him. If I put three of them together, it'd be KKK. Oh, uh, I'm 62 now, and I, I started painting when I was about 17, so uh, you figure that out. It's a little over 40 years, I believe, so I've been at it uh, quite a while, but it's uh, it's still the most exciting thing in the world to me, I think, and every day is uh, it's something I look forward to, and uh, uh, sometimes I think I know how to do it, but uh, you really don't. Uh, for me, I think uh, every day is a new day, and you sort of start over, and uh, and uh, uh, do it for the first time each time. So uh, how long you do it doesn't really matter. I think you just get a little more uh, uh, confidence in, uh, in just going ahead and doing it whether you make mistakes or not. Well, I have uh, <clears throat> uh, quite a number of birds that uh, we keep for pets and we sort of live out in the country and uh, uh, we have, uh, we feed the wild birds and we have a lot of birds that come up to the door and wait for them to come out and uh, feed them. And uh, I have some uh, doves that I, I keep outside. Some of them fly around the yard, some of them stay in the pen. And uh, so uh, we just always kind of like birds, we like watching birds, watching birds. And uh, uh, they have such a strong uh, symbolic uh, connotation in the whole history of art. And uh, I simply, of course, the dove's an obvious one. In, kinds of things I do, but uh, I find the, the, the whole bird idea very fragile and very vulnerable, very, uh, 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 oh, almost uh, like, a, like a little child in a way in, in, in that context. So, the, so to me, uh, to see a, a, a dead bird is, is about the most unnatural thing I can think of, and so uh, I use the dead birds a lot because a lot of what I see living people do is, is awfully unnatural. I don't uh, see any difference between the medium. You, uh, I draw in the paintings, and uh, uh, there's no difference between oil paint and watercolor paint. It's all paint, and uh, uh, I like to uh, you know, do, the draw, do drawings, uh, it, not only in preparation for the paintings, but just drawings to, for themselves. So the, uh, what you are as an artist, and your job is to hopefully try to produce art in, in whatever materials you use. Seems to me to be uh, totally, totally immaterial. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, make art out of anything you can.